Um, so yeah, anyways, uh, it was this weird situation where Khan had complete map control. They were up by like around three to 4,000 gold. Um, and that is always the like big inflection point in a game. If you have an early game oriented draft that can pressure down towers, take them down one by one by one, kill people off. Um, and then just slow, slowly assert your will on the enemy team. You're going to win the game eventually if you can keep that same lead up. And then the big question is, can you go high ground? In that instance, they went high ground. There was some split pushing that was coming out from Cyber Legacy, but Khan were in a position where they could maybe take two racks. Um, and I think that they would have. Uh, but the problem was that when they went up there and when they had the Aegis and when they had this Ten Weaver seconds, time lapse ags and all of these things that were set up to keep Dusa alive, Five Dusa died. Remaining. So their entire draft is built around this idea of let's keep Medusa alive when they try and commit onto her. And they couldn't do that. So it wasn't a problem that their draft was bad. It was a problem that they didn't execute it well. So if I'm Khan, I, I actually I don't like as much that they're switching up things now, going for this Void Spirit, going for the Enigma. To me, Radiant I think that their draft had a really good synergy to it. Um, and granted, yeah, the Tusk was first phase banned. Um, so that meant that they weren't going to be able to get exactly the same type of draft that they had before. But to me, this feels like they're playing a different game. Um, and I thought that their game plan before was really strong. So... Uh, I'm a little bit disappointed that Khan's not trying Ten to commit back to what worked for them before because it did work. Like, by and large, I, I think it's Five really hard for, for teams sometimes because there's this, like, feeling that we lost the game, therefore we must have we must have failed. And, yes, that's true to some extent, that there was a failure that went on. But that failure was not in the ideas that the team had. The failure was not in the uh, the sort of game plan that they had put together and the way that they were executing. It was, like... That at the critical time when they needed everything to work, it fell apart. Um, and I think that that's in some ways one of the harder things. I mean, it should be one of the Dial easier things to get back. over. Um, but we'll see if they end up being able to get over it or not. Because um, it's frustrating. It's, I'm sure, incredibly frustrating uh, for that team. Um, but you got to be able to find the, the good things that are going on there as well. So I personally uh, am feeling like now you've got a Void Spirit and Enigma. This draft from Khan is more oriented towards early fighting. Uh, it's oriented towards still again with the Dragonite and the Chen taking down towers early. Probably we're going to see a similar idea of the 13 minutes as like a benchmark. Can they take down all the outer tier one towers? It'll be interesting to watch that because that, that feels like that game plan is the same to me. Uh, where things have changed, though, is that instead of being, like, again, Ten walking from lane to lane to lane, taking on all the towers, it feels like with this Void Spirit, with this Enigma, Five there's a little bit of a different um, focus. There's going to be maybe a Helm of the Dominator coming out for Enigma, and he plays a similar way that the Chen does. Void Spirit tries to, like, he's going to sort of play that Ember Spirit role, where you, you go in and you, uh, you know, make some chaos in the fight and try and control one or two heroes... Um, one issue that I do see though is that they really don't have great burst damage for Necro right now. They're also gonna need, I mean, Monkey King inside of like an Enigma Ulti or Midnight Pulse or whatever. It's gonna be really annoying to fight off against. But uh, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. We will see. Right now, after that game one, um, I would have been favoring Khan, uh, but. I think based upon what I'm seeing in the draft and the decision to change things up and be more team fight oriented from Khan, I feel like I'm favoring Cyber Legacy again. The Invoker is going to be interesting. I'm assuming it's going to be Quas Wex, um, not 100% positive. So we get ready to hop into this game at number two. Uh, apparently, I also had a little bit of trouble with the overlay on the last one. So I'm just going to switch that up a little bit here. And then we'll see once we get into the game if there is an issue with uh, the the teams not showing up again. Cause that was something that happened last game where the, the team icons weren't showing up uh, and I do have a little bit of a fix. So we will see. Grab a sip of coffee. 
I would invite all of you guys to enjoy some tasty beverage as well, if you're feeling like it. But a best of three, game number two, do or die time for Khan. This is an elimination match. Again, keep in mind, everybody, this is the continuation of uh, a very long league that we've had going on for a while. Um, Seagull Pro League that has been going on since February 25th, and it is set to continue on uh, this playoff and grand finals eventually all the way till uh, late April. If not a little bit later, depending upon what happens. Um, so we'll be keeping our eyes on that and seeing uh, how this matchup looks for these two teams. As I mentioned, do or die time. They're in the lower bracket because uh, of the seeding. The winner is going to move on to face uh, Team this Empire Hope, who just lost the other day to uh, Cyber, battle. not Cyber Legacy, Aggressive Mode. Uh, so it looks like we do not have the overlays yet again. So, or not the overlays, but the uh, there's an issue going on with the ticketing uh, software. So I'm just going to add them on real quickly for you wonderful people out there. Con, do that. I think that. Oh, this is so hard to see. I think this is it. Is that right? Nope, that's not it. Where is it? Oh wait, this is the wrong one entirely. Don't worry, guys. Everything is fine. <laughs> there we go. There's the logo. Put that right up battle. here. I'll make it a little bit smaller in a second. And then for our other folks, um, let's get image. This is just for you guys. Just for you. Because we love you. We love you. Yeah, that's a big old cyber legacy. Holy Toledo. That thing is huge. The battle a begins. Smaller. Perfect. So stun comes out, bounty rune battle, Khan gonna get one, big num the other, Palantimos. So that should be a three for one. Is that right? I think so. Pretty fancy. Pretty oh, fancy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, they did pick this one up, right? Yep, just a graphical glitch. So Quaswex Invoker, most likely. Uh, he could still go back for Exord if he wants, but there isn't really that hero that you would want to pair together for the uh, Sunstrike hits um, in this game. Like, maybe the Dragonite, you know, Dragon Tail could be a nice little combo, something like that. Um, but it's not amazing. Does he get both? Oh, no. Dude, that backswing is so long. It's so hard to get it off. And already... You, you can tell what's coming. Pugna is moving in to just try and contest the farms continually of Enigma. Are they going to lose this courier? Radiant Dude, that's his salve. I mean, he takes two tower shots on the Pugna, but that's super worth it. Now, if you're Necro, you can play like mega aggro because you've got, I guess he doesn't have a salve of his own. But yeah, you can see right here. I mean, I actually think that this might be a bit of a bait for the Necro, to be honest. It's that moment where you feel like you should be able to. But with Quaswex and Voker, his regen is going to be off the charts. So Necro might actually uh, end up in a weird situation here. We'll see if uh, if Arrow can can get all of these CS under tower. I guess it's still taking a lot. Tornado to get that one, nice. Picks up a couple more along the way. Not gonna get that one. Yeah, this is one of the issues. Um, so good job there by the Necro to pressure in the tower. And then Pugna in the meantime is just gonna run back and forth and try and mess with this Enigma if possible. Very frustrating, I'm sure. So that does leave us with a one-on-one -on -one up top with the Void Spirit versus Monkey King. This is a bit of a weird matchup, but I think that Monkey should win this as you get more levels. Um, granted, Resonant Pulse is going to be nice, but just counting to four is pretty OP. Look at this. What the hell do you do against this man? Um, maybe it's not the end of the world. Yeah, he's already got two points in it, actually. Yeah, this should be tough. This is going to be a hard lane for the Void Spirit, I feel like. So, you don't have help from the Enigma. I guess the only thing that you could maybe say, Enigma needs to, like, try and, you know, take out these range creeps continuously to keep the wave pushed back into his favor. Uh, Axe bottom in the meantime. Last hero having a really easy time of it. 
Uh, so yeah, I mean, this ward right here is going to scout out all of Enigma's movements. You're going to see the Pugna just follow him continuously. Um, maybe need to get a sentry ward taken out. Oh god, he's just killing the Eidolons. Holy crap. Dude, this is a, this is a really bad Enigma start. Jesus. You're only making it worse. Making it worse. <laughs> oh no. God. Oh, it's so frustrating. All right, but yeah, he can at least deny out the wave over there. In the meantime, you do see Dragonite pull this one over to the side camp. That's gonna be fine. But I'm I'm worried about this Enigma's game, dude. He's just got another Sentry or Observer Ward too. He's gonna place this one over here, dude. Are you kidding me? There's no way, dude. At least he got his stuff. But holy crap! That's two couriers down yet again. One of my favorites. Unbelievable. Dude, this invoker is so sad. 22 and 5 versus 13 and 0. Oh god. There's no way this game goes well here at this point for Khan. They're like, they're super screwed. This is what I mean. Just like I don't I don't understand why they had to do it like that. Ugh. They were playing really well. They they had a winning strategy, and now Void Spirit. What the, what the fuck is Void Spirit doing? He's like, all right, guys, I gotta help out. Why? Why is this happening? Why does he have a giant creep wave? He just like tries to throw out the remnant to get that other one, dude. I have no idea what's going on here. What is his plan? What's happening? Why? I don't know what's going on. Bottom is just a complete and total ridiculous mess. Void Spirit is like doing some... I guess he has to just pull the wave in, but I think he pulled one of the Invoker wave, didn't he? If, no, he wouldn't have pulled the Invoker's wave, but still, that's super weird. But he lost one of the range creeps, so that's that's unfortunate for him. From the void. Um, Excellent. I don't know what his goal is here. I guess he's gonna try and just deny out a whole wave eventually. But I'm How close is he to so six? Necro's gonna get six off of this creep. I don't know if they have anybody that can rotate in. It probably need to be the Pugna. I can't believe that this ward is gonna get the full duration. That ward just completely crippled the Enigma. So yeah, this is the idea. Cheshire Cat pulls the wave back behind. We'll be able to deny out a little bit of creeps here, but there wasn't that range creep, which makes all the difference Dyer's in the world, right? Like having that range creep attack. there means that you can maybe deny out like two waves. As it stands, he only got like one-ish, and now this wave is gonna push again afterwards. So level four for him. He's got 18 CS right here at just about six minutes. Uh, again, Enigma gonna try and push back this Pugna. He places another ward there. This is this is gonna be a this is gonna be a tough one. This is around the time that like enigmas, if you're farming perfectly, get helm. Um, and he is so far away from it. TPs down bottom. They bring in the necro. He finds the enigma after TPing. Oh my god, is he just dead? I think he's just dead. Oh, he messed up. Enigma or the necro messed up. He didn't have enough mana for both. He was like ten mana short. That would have been the kill. Radiant are scanning. Wow. That's a huge win right there. I, you take that every day of the week. Grimstroke went down. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Oh, God. Boundless strike. Ooh, hold on. Good job there, Roy Wade Spirit. Radiant but that's the thing that's going to be tough about this, right? As we do see a stun, Dragonite trying to get aggro. Just have no damage. Um, keeping that creep alive could be good. The envenomed weapon is actually kind of cool. It means that you don't get your regen naturally. And like that seven regen, it's relevant for when hero being able to tank through this stuff. But yeah, like 37 and 14 on the Monkey King. 44. Let's take, let's take a look at what the net worth is. It's it's gonna be tragic. Yeah, it's just really tough. Denied. Um, God, I don't even know what your plan is here. I guess that getting into the spirit vessel is going to be good for Invoker, but it's going to be a while. 
if they can get all the heroes online there's a chance they could take fights the enigma is like i mean he's actually below the pugna which is insane pugna's had a really good game for himself so far now he's taking out the eidolons and oh wow wowzers you fought badly died worse Hold snap. <laughs> They're both just gonna <laughs> deny it. Sick. All right. Like nobody wants an invisor anyways. Screw that noise. Oh. Looking for a win here. Spots him. Stun. There is not any follow up. Yeah, this is a like. Who do who do they pull in to do anything? Void Spirit needs to be huge to like make moves around the map. He he needs to he needed to get recalled there by Chen, to be honest. That's like what needed to happen. Radiance Middle Tower is Bugna. under attack. Just making life miserable for this Enigma. Stealing away those big creeps. Soaking XP. Been generally being a pest. But yeah, I, I think that like you, you need to get this Void Spirit involved in the game. Cheshire Cat can't just farm. He has to make moves. This 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 could be a good play here. Although now he's gonna walk in range of that. He just walked through, so now they know that he's up here and immediately Monkey King runs away. Yeah. Yeah, it's really rough. This is uh the type of thing that like it's just so hard to play against, right? Like, if things start falling apart, you normally want to make some type of a move to sort of cut it out and find kills around the map, but it's not easy. He's just casting the heal on him every second. It's like, don't worry, man. I got gotcha. you. It's going to be healed right on up. Bring in the Pugna. Trying to take this one away. Dragonite says, no, no, no. They're going to take over this one. Aether Remnant, lay down. <gasps> they need to get it with all three. And the tornado to interrupt. Oh. I'll take that. Damn. All right. Radiant, the only one to get XP. It's not amazing. It's like, it's not really that huge of a number, but it's, it's, it's relevant, you know? So that was well done. In the meantime... Last hero, just going in for the Blink Dagger. Uh, looks like he's not even bothering to stop off at the Vanguard, which I'm kind of okay with. Tornado available, but not opting to go for it. So Invoker's starting to come online a little bit. Has his phase boots done. Those are going to be coming out. Going to work on the urn next. Uh, you do have... Helm of the Dominator done on Enigma. Dire structures are I can't believe that these wards got full duration out. That blows my mind. Like, it's just crazy. But regardless, they're... So this is an interesting move, right? Like, they're showing the DK form up here. So that should signal that you're safe on the Monkey King. But they're making this smoke rotation at the same time. This is actually such a good play. See, this is the type of play where Khan is like... This team is good, right? Like, that's a really, really smart play. You make this big move over to the side here uh, in the mid lane to try and take the tower and simultaneously make the gank happen with the smoked up Enigma. But then you go high ground with, like, Rapier and just die as Medusa with nobody saving you. And you've got, like, Weaver Eggs, Tusk, and all these other things. So they manage to take the top tier one tower. They get the kill with the black hole. In a way, this feels like Enigma's game's kind of been saved a little bit. Not like completely salvaged, but he's he has a game at the very least. Like it's it's not gonna just all fall apart for him. Um, they really need to kill this axe, I think. Try and slow down his blink dagger timing. Mess with Pugna a bit here. Oh. Oh. Of stomp. Stun gonna land still. Moving in with the Necro. Boundless Strike tries to get out of there. Was dusted and dead. Pugna on the other side though does go down to the Void Spirit. So able to get a return kill in exchange for losing their Invoker. But yeah, it never feels good to get Reaper. 
And they have some really cool combos uh, with the Grimstroke later on as well, right? Like, Reaper Scythe with Grimstroke. I mean, even Battle Hunger is not bad. The Life Drain. All these things are really nice. Not to mention any, like, later on items that you pick up. I wouldn't even mind seeing a Dagon on Necro. You know? Double Dagon? Sounds cool. The thing is, they really don't have much in the way of, like, super duper burst damage. I guess you're probably going to want to... Greaves is probably the safer route, because you're going to need something to deal with the uh, Cold Snap Urn combo that's coming out, and the Spear Vessel. I wouldn't even mind seeing maybe Necro go back for, like, a, a Lotus or something. They probably have enough damage with just what they have without needing to go for something crazy like the Dagon. But it could be cool. Meantime, Enigma continuing to farm up has had a little bit of an easier going now that the lightning stage has broken down a little bit. <laughs> Grimstroke trying to go for an Aether Lens. You're almost at Greaves now on this Necro. And Pugna in the meantime, just the sort of casual Tranquil Boots. Radiance go middle for the Life Drain under attack. Battery. HP for his team. So like I was saying, this timing that I thought we were going to see with the Chen Dragonite was trying to take down all the outer tier 1 towers by around 13 minutes. It is 14 minutes and they've only taken one. So the timing much worse than it was last game as they do find and control this Necro. Cold Snap there afterwards. Problem is, no Urn Charges right now. So this, this rotation is not going to bear any fruit. In fact, Necro is just sitting here cool as a cucumber, not even afraid of anything. Another Breathe Fire turns on to him. They can keep on throwing out some of these Harpy Stormcrafters, but as soon as they have the life drain, I mean, it's really hard to kill Necro. Th this seems like an interesting combination, right? Granted, you've got Ghost Shroud and Decrep, which do much similar things. So we're going to get a recall in. Kalis trying to pull somebody to help him. Hoof Stomp is there already. Stun afterwards, but the call now going to be able to have the black hole on to two. Life Drain trying to keep this Necro alive. Stun is out. It is not enough. Tornado lift up. Win Hero in trouble. He's going to die. And that was exactly what Khan needed. 100%. That fight had to happen that way. Otherwise, they were going to get smashed. Cheshire Cat looking for the open up. Misses. On the Pugna. Resonant Pulse already out. Cheshire Cat, not anything left fallen. in the tank. Try and get the kill. But they do manage to take that mid tier one. So this timing is coming a little bit later uh, than probably they would have liked. Um, some Essence Ring gets picked up for DK there. My thrift rewarded. But it's probably not the end of the world still. I mean, as I said, this whole draft of Khan is let's try is and fight more in the mid -tier. As opposed to just walking at towers. Um, that being said, they do still need to walk at towers and get objectives off of those kills. Which is what the DK for, which is what the uh, Enigma is for to some extent as well. As they slow down. Again. He was farming that camp. Like, all it takes is a second. Just wait. He's got a Shadow Blade. Just chill. Unfortunate timing there for Khan. <laughs> but three spirit or three earn charges so far for the invoker trying to get towards Radiance the spirit vessel. Is under attack. Seeing if you can find Radiant anybody off of these trees trying fortified. to cut waves. Not seeing anybody. Won't see anybody. Also has a clumsy net. It's kind of cool. I never use clumsy net. I should. Radiance middle tower is Such under Such a good attack. item, but like. Just Something with me and activatables in my neutral. I need to like change up the key bindings or something because I just never use it. Akia? Akila? 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 Well, that's so difficult for me to say right now, but whatever it is, Axe has it. Did you give it off to somebody else? Monkey? He's probably got it coming out to him right now on Courier. So, tier one tower still standing down bottom. 
haven't really gotten any of the other pressure onto it. As far as Cyber Legacy is concerned, they've also done virtually no, uh, you know, complete tower damage. There's still a, a decent amount done bottom and mid, uh, but it looks like they're going to switch things up. Yeah, he's going for the Lotus. This is, this is what I was thinking, like for Necro, just have more ways to take off all of these things that are coming your direction. Uh, make sure that you can take off Malefist, that you can take off Spirit Vessel Charges, two of them now. This stuff's really important. And just like that, hello, hello. Managed to get the catch onto that DK. Essence Ring trying to live, but the Reaper Scythe will be there. He's going to go down. That's another nice little combo. The decrep into Reaper Sight. Dude, that is going to be a lot of damage. That is that is terrifying. Oof. More gold. Yeah, bottom tower starting to go down. Gayo is here to clean it up. Mid tower, they're also pressuring at the same time. They're going to have another glyph here, but Pugna is just moving in. Goes out another blast. Doink, doink, doink. Yeah, they can lift that one as well. Top lane in the meantime. Oh, actually, hold that thought. Yeah, top lane. Void Spirit trying to get some split push going. But it does feel like we're kind of turning the corner a little bit here, right? You need Black Hole to take the fight, and they almost have the Blink Dagger on the Enigma. That feels like it's going to be what they're waiting for now. Uh, ways to cancel it. They've got Reaper Scythe as the big one. Uh, does not pierce magic immunity anymore, obviously. Axe Hull hypothetically can work. Uh, Grimstroke stuff doesn't cancel it anymore, except for Phantom's Embrace, which is kind of nice. Um, and then Boundless Strike. Radiance bottom okay, tower we'll see. is under attack. Echo Saber done for the monkey. Smoke up now with absolutely everybody. And where are they gonna go? The pings Death come. Grimstroke is going straight for this outpost to try and secure it. Fisher Cat runs into him. Misses. Ooh, now they run into him over here, though. Yeah, that's going to be the stun. Give the old stun and punch. That dude is dead. Meanwhile, over to the side. Void Spirit controlling. Healing. Finish him off. All right. Still no reveal yet of the Blink Dagger. They haven't taken this outpost. I feel like that's definitely the play, is take that outpost right here. So we have a little bit of a pause. So 2,000 gold lead right now. As we have a short pause. But yeah, this looks like DK pushing out the wave. Maybe Ducalis goes back, takes this outpost. Then they can pressure. Enigma's going to have Blink with Black Hole available. Needs to get BKB still, obviously. Um, but there are ways of dealing with it to some extent. Um, going straight for the Aghanims, actually, on Void Spirit after the Yule Scepter. What's that good for in this game? It's actually kind of nice against Monkey King. I mean, Monkey is going to be going for the BKB next, I think. Is that what's coming out? Does he have anything coming out on the courier? He doesn't have anything, but I really doubt it's going to be Deso. Um, but yeah, I think he's going to go BKB. But up until that point, you know, he counts to four, gets his Jingu going, gets the silence out before Boundless Strike comes out, and suddenly he doesn't have nearly the level of heal that he would have had before. So that's a nice part. Um... Obviously, I need these spellcasting heroes. It's pretty good on. Hello? They gotta take this outpost, though, surely. Surely. Just got a Lacrity. Who's the best person to throw Lacrity on in these fights? Isn't really even a great person to put alacrity on. It's crazy. 
They have like very limited right clickers. DK needs to get like huge this game. He's going BKB. So they're not taking that outpost. I mean, I guess it's probably going to be hard to like get somebody to smoke in and TP behind enemy lines for the fight. It's always so dangerous. Necro up front and center. No Lotus yet, but he will run to Cheshire Cat. Big call there on the Chen. Yule Scepter lift up, keeping Necro out of this fight. Stun comes out, but he was able to get the Wukong's command out first. And now Dragonite kind of completely out of position. They throw down the Malefist, trying to jump in on this one, if at all possible, controlling the Necropos. Cheshire Cat is going to get chased down and killed. And because of the placement of the Wukong's command, they weren't able to get off of Blink Black Hole. Now with no damage going in, I'm just gonna reaper up this Chen. Do you guys see that, by the way? Necro walked to the other side of the Chen, and so the scythe like changed direction halfway through. For it was facing this way, and then it was just like whoop, the other direction. Weird visual effects. But yeah, getting that Wukong's command off there was really important. If, if Monkey King doesn't get that, then you've got like an easy initiation with the Blink Black Hole afterwards, but it was too far to jump for him, and so they couldn't do it. Yeah, he's just got about now enough for the, uh, for the Lotus. He's gonna get it probably off the next couple of neutral creeps. But yeah, hard game right now for, uh, for Khan. Um, that fight did not go the way they wanted it to, and now you're suddenly all of the cores from Cyber Legacy are winning. Haste. So, 22 minutes, 3,000 gold lead. Radiance and... bottom tower is under attack. Oh, he did go Deso. What the hell? Are you kidding me? This is so greedy. Why would you go Deso? Just go BKB. Uh, I don't know about that one. That 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 could be game losing right there, to be honest. Yule Scepter. They get out the taunt afterwards. Remnant pulls in. Stun there onto Grimstroke. They move on top of all of them. Black Hole onto two, but they're not able to do it. Tornado lifts up a couple, but the bigger problem is that Black Hole getting canceled. No answer now. Khan are going to lose the Dragon Knight. They're going to lose the Enigma. And honestly, they, they, they might just lose the game. This is really bad. And well, now Cheshire Cat needs to be careful. Dual Scepter, but the Lotus Orb just picked up and now caught. They pull him back in again. Reaper's Sight. And give him the tip because that is a dieback on top of a Reaper's Sight. Holy crap. Yeah, it doesn't. This this is really rough. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Is Axe really the play? Because Ag, I, I'm trying to remember for Ags for Invoker. Am I mistaken? I feel like it's it's like way worse Radiance than it used to be now. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. I feel like it's mainly. Isn't it like just the Cataclysm? Am I crazy? It's Cataclysm and something else. Invisibility. Radiant are scanning. Well, they do find the Chen. Silenced, bopped, done. Magma Scepter does not improve the passive attack. bonuses granted by Quaswex. Next sword, it makes invoked spells consider them one level higher than what they were. Is that worth it for 4,000 gold? Radiant's middle tower is under attack. I mean, obviously, he feels like it is. That's what he's going for, but it seems crazy to me now. Yeah, so it improves all of the spells across the board and unlocks, and unlocks cataclysm. They jump on top of this invoker and will kill him again. I mean, he has one point in Exort right now. Am I crazy for this? I feel like I'm probably crazy for this. I'll take that. Well, regardless, um, yeah, no longer reduces cooldown from six to two. Now adds positive to the sun strike. 
then it's all the normal stuff with it. I feel like it was way worse, particularly for boss wax and pokers. But regardless, uh, you know, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Top lane. Radiance bottom. Hello. Is under attack. Wait for the simulate. Arrow's still chasing. Not gonna go for it. Radiance middle tower has fallen. So yeah, Lotus is back there, down bottom side. They find the Monkey King. They got to take him down here. And are they going to be able to? Looks like they will. And that that is the way that you get back into this game here, right? As the stun comes out, um, is if Monkey King dies because he doesn't have BKB, that's like the way that you can lose this game if you're Cyber Legacy. <laughs> All right, nine to thirteen. Got ourselves Blink, Crimson, Yule Scepter is going to come out soon for the axe up top. Did they find him? Pugna looking for a fight, but they don't have their invoker in the mid lane where the bigger fight might be going on. Stun there on the Necro, trying to kill him off. Yara is going to go down as they chase this Necro, but not going to find him. And uh, it looks like it is... Oh, God. Oh, he can't get out right now. Oh, surely. Surely no. All right. Life drain. And there's the Malefist. Almost actually managed to kill off the Enigma with that Nether Ward nearby. But he's going to live as Necrophos. Jump in. Call on to two. Do they have an extra follow-up? They're pulling in the Invoker for the fight. Buyback coming from that Pugna. There's the Yule Scepter lift up. Monkey King Ultimate going to be laid down. Kind of an awkward positioning. Not sure if it's going to be good enough. As they have that stun. Continued beat down onto Dragonite and a God. Not enough. They even pull the Necro actually down to the low ground. There's going to be the Black Hole, but I don't think they have enough damage. They kill off one. That's going to be the Necro finally dead. But now the leash onto both. Silence afterwards. Chase continuing to come from this Monkey King who is wanting to kill off this Enigma, if at all possible, but a good blink away keeps alive the Enigma. So final tally is very weird back and forth, but I think that that still favors Cyber Legacy. I am mighty. I don't know. So it wasn't, oh yeah, because the buyback from the pug, he didn't, he did die. All right, that is more into the favor than of Khan. That's a little bit better then. Uh, what are we looking at? He is 700 gold away from Aghanim Scepter. It does make a big difference for him. Um, Invoker is starting to put more points into Axor. So I guess that, you know, by the time he gets to the Aghanims, his levels are going to be such that a Black Hole Cataclysm can just win them a fight. Um, that's kind of what they're hoping for, I think, at this point. Granted, it's a long cooldown, but Tornado can get thrown out there in a second if they need to. <laughs> Still chilling. Ooh, cold snap. Nice play there with the Yules. Tornado on to two, trying to find this Invoker. Silence is there. They got to take off this Embraced Phantom and out. Looking for that opening. Mech is out. Tornado, Deafening Blast. He actually took so much damage from that Nether Ward. And the silence does connect onto the DK as he backs out, but it looks like it's going to be Roche going the way of Cyber Legacy. As they throw out these remnants, just trying to keep Cyber Legacy from getting a free Roche. Cheshire Cat can go for the double dump if he wants. For both of them. One of the Astral Steps. They do have another one available. It's coming off of a cooldown for the second one afterwards. But I think that at this point, they're probably just going to let it go. Black Hole, 40 seconds away from being off cooldown. And Aegis is going to go into the hands of Palantimos. Now I think has his BKB coming out. That's, that's the moment where it's really hard to fight uh, if you are Radiant. Granted, there's still going to be the option of, you know, Cataclysm coming out once this Invoker gets another 1,500 gold. Billion talents come out there. The 
Heart Stopper Regen Reduction. Dyer's top tower is under attack. It's pretty good against the uh against the DK. That's nice. Ghost walk. River stroke goes down, they find the invoker. He is looking mighty mighty dead. Damn. This has been a rough game for him. Oh god. Radiance middle tower. Well, back towards mid. They have a BKB done on Dragonite. He's got Dragon Form. Shadow Blade forward. Trying to find an opening. Who does he need to go on first? I mean, Aegis is there on the Monkey King, so you probably don't want to go on him. Trying to reduce some damage. Pull the creeps past. Silence, but fine. The resonant pulse. Some amount of work there, Necro, but nothing afterwards. Bottom lane has been pushed in by the Sinigma. They might be able to get a tier 2 tower out of this. Still, the melee barracks is holding. Where are they going to go? Clumsy net. Nothing afterwards. Trying to kill the creeps. Melee Rax is going to go down. <laughs> Pikachu is feeling good about it. <laughs> He's laughing, cackling. Uh, they need some big items. I think that the only way that you win this fight right now is it needs to turn these into Eidolons. Oh, they got to know that this is coming. Can't afford to get caught here. And it doesn't look like they're going Radiance to. Maybe over to the side they can get attack. one of these guys. Little scepter lift up. Feeling invincible. BKB down. They're just going to solo black hole the Necrophos. And do they even kill him? They do. Barely able to take him down. No! Oh, God. He TPs out inside the Roche pit and they won't find anybody else. I mean, they're over to the side here. This could still be a battle if they can find an Radiant opening. Underneath the Sentry Ward, they see the Dragonite moving over to the side. Monkey King standing still up in the trees. Jump forward, call on that Void Spirit. Now finding the Pugna. They're going in. Yayo under control. Have the Midnight Pulse down as well. Deafening Blast push back onto both of them. It's a lot of damage coming out from that Midnight Pulse, but is it quite going to be enough? It doesn't look like it. Leash together, this Void Spirit and the Chen trying to run away. They don't have another Midnight Pulse for another 13 seconds. Cheshire Cat, and you get the Evil Scepter lift up, controlling, and soon to be killing off Wind Hero, if at all possible, but no. He walks away, 100 HP, not able to get that kill. They will take down the Grimstroke. So a very, again, back and forth oriented game. As another Remnant, control, Cold Snap, Spirit Vessel, he does have this Aegis, which is about to expire now. So they take him down one time. Can, can they do it again? They swell down, ate the Remnant, pulling him in right at the start, taunting, moving in, trying to break the Blink Dagger of Wind Hero here as they control and are going to be able to find this kill onto the Monkey King. And now Wind Hero's in trouble. Another round of spells coming out, and they got to be careful. Dude, this Cold Snap cooldown talent is terrifying. Another remnant controls on to this freaking axe as the jump through comes. The disarm is there, slowing down by virtue of the ghost walk. They will lose that void spirit eventually. And maybe finally, they have gone a bit too far as the invoker and the void spirit are dead. Khan overplayed their hand a little bit. It was looking really good. Like, if you get out of there with just, like, you don't even, like, as soon as those buybacks came, they didn't need to happen. But there, there's a realistic possibility that they could have just uh, backed out with the Invoker and the Void Spirit. But regardless, still a good fight for them. They burned through the Aegis. Khan definitely making a bit of a comeback there. Uh, and it's an Aghanim Scepter done now with, th with, you know, max getting close to max out points of Exhort. Uh, this is going to be relevant. Like, if you find a multi-person black hole, they're just going to die. They're, they're super going to die. So I am uh, a little concerned. There are some weird things that could happen. Like you could get really unlucky uh, as the invoker. Let's say that you black hole like two people, right? And it's in this area. And then you have like one person, which is right here. And one person, which is right here. Because they start like moving in, in a circle around the black hole. You could hypothetically get into a world where like as they're moving, they move out of like the exort. The, the things are right there. And then they like move out of the way. I just realized why I drew right there. So I'm going to move away from that now. But you get my point. Um, 
that that's a very real possibility where you could miss the sun strikes coming down from the cataclysm um, just because of the weirdness of black hole radiance top tower but who knows attack. who radiance top tower has fallen 17 to 20. smoke picked up by chen they have black hole Got cataclysm. Top tower is under attack. Celestial beans are going to possibly win this team. Khan. We'll have to wait and see. Is this going to happen or not? Looks like they kind of just want to hold for the moment, which I, I can understand, you know. It's a little spooky. They only have one spirit vessel Radiance charge. Trying to get towards the AC for Dragonite, so they're at least going to have like a bit of a mix of damage. 20% cooldown's nice. <laughs> they ping. They saw it. He's walking over. He's going to back out of there. Smoke. They find the monkey man. He's jumping. Radiant are scanning. Radiant scan. Thought that somebody is in there. They're up on the high ground, though. Dragon Knight cutting through this wave. Very limited vision. They'd see nothing on Radiant. Dire caught sight there of the Dragon Knight. Know that he could be in the area. They're trying to kill through this wave. Now, if you're Radiant, you know that Radiant's they're up on this high ground. And these creeps actually doing a really good job. Okay, so th this is big. These creeps spotting here is important. Because, hypothetically, they could have tried to make a move. Um, I thought maybe Radiant would go for it. I mean, right now, it's just so hard because Pikachu is enormous. Right? Shiva's, Greaves, Lotus. It's mostly oriented towards defensive builds. He's actually got 4,200 gold just chilling in his back pocket right now. Fuel Scepter. He is all alone. He gets the taunt off. Black Hole there. On to one. And he's just dead. That is a good amount of gold. Cheshire Cat chasing forward for this. They buy back on the Necro, trying to get him back in the fight. BKB out from Yayo. So he tries to run in there. Big call onto two. That's what they needed. Can they kill off this Void Spirit as well? Looks like the answer is no. Gets the Deafening Blast off. Take off the silence from that Void Spirit. But the Chen bought back. And looks like it's going to be the end of it. So buy back from that Necro. It's, it's a big win there. Uh, having to buy back on the Chen, not the worst thing in the world. But now with no Black Hole, they will have the Necrophos there. The scary thing is what happens if you lose the Necro? You know what I mean? Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. That's real scary. Stun. Comes out. We're looking for the four staff into the side here. They thought maybe they could have caught the Monkey King. But he was away already. Okay, cold snap. Radiance top tower. A lot of mana and everything else turned around, but the Greaves used, so no dispels right now. This is a good time to go. If they can go before Greaves come back off cooldown, 30 seconds. But it doesn't look like they want to do it. Only 12,000 net worth lead right now. I mean, they're they're sort of pulling it back together a little bit from Khan. It's still such a tremendous lead. And this is going to be Aegis and Cheese now. You have to go and fight this. There's no two ways about it. Like, 40 seconds till Black Hole, but you can't just give up Roche. Oh, God. I don't think they know that it's happening. <sighs> that's one of those things that's really frustrating, I'm sure. As soon as they... Like, they're going to ping Roche in a second, and then, like, Roche is going to die. Yeah, the call comes out. They know that it's happening now. They might have known before, but now they feel like they can't do anything about it. show up just a bit too late. Wukong's command is already down. Yeah, they were late. Tornado, maybe. Maybe. Oh! Pikachu snatched the Aegis, actually. They got the cheese on Void Spear. That's pretty big. All right. Maybe they can kill off Grimstrokes and heal back up by the Pugna. Black hole there. On to three. The Cataclysm afterwards. It's enough. They take him down when he was also in trouble. Dude, I can't believe that they saved that. Cheshire Cat with the double jump through freaking anime move like a god dang baller and then they lose three and if this necro goes down right now which it looks like he's going to 
this is going to be a dieback for him. None of these heroes will have buybacks. All surrounded together, grouped up. Stare into the abyss, my dude, because you are going down and dead. Oof. What a huge win. What a freaking huge win. My thrift rewarded. 100 seconds, no necro. They know he doesn't have buyback. Look at this fight recap. Almost, what, 4,000 gold change, 11,000 XP change. 11,000 XP? What the hell? How is this fair? <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, that's all it takes. I'm never going to doubt the Ags Invoker again. <laughs> like Dyer's one point in Cataclysm is he was halfway, or one point in Exort when he was halfway through Dyer's with it. Now he's got Alacrity. Like, this is terrifying. Oh god, I remember this so well from last game though. They stuck around too long afterwards. Alacrity, go dragon form. Let's see it. Fuel Scepter lift up. Big ol' stun, getting ready to come out with that blade mail. Punches coming out and taking down the Pugna. Buys back immediately. They take down the tier 3 tower and Dragon Knight, scary as all get out. Going for the Wukong's commands with the cold snap on him. But Khan, oh, they're leaving it open. I don't know. I don't know. Daedalus. Daedalus is the pickup for Dragon Knight. From the core of the universe, a treasure. So 42 minutes in, 23 to 21. Dyer's and the big thing here is like, yes, Radiant Necro, super duper farmed. Uh, Monkey King, really farmed. Axe, fairly farmed as well. But you've got this like quad core going on. And then Chen. And Chen's no slouch either. Chen is, is spooky. Chen is real spooky. They're getting towards the BKBs of their own. Anything else that's coming out soon? Refresher, nigga. Oh my god, he's almost got it. What the hell? Dude, this game is actually so hype. I was totally prepared for this to be the most boring series ever. When you got these crazy games with these teams that are just like super duper outlandish, they pick giant team fight combos. It's like, it's pretty good. I like it. Centaur trying to scout, but find the Chen. Mech comes out already. Swell afterwards, rooted. Black hole onto two, because why not? One more time again with the Cataclysm Meteor dropped on a dome. And that is going to be everybody going down one more again. So they try and control, but they find the Pugna. Just beat down time coming from the big bad blue dragon. Who is stunned up for the moment, but they take down three yet again. <laughs> Malefice trying to head off to the side. Monkey King ultimate down. They taunt. If they want to, they can just walk over towards mid, push out the wave, and leave him to his own devices. Because why not? Oh, God. They have a refresher on it. Oh, they need that creep wave badly. That's annoying, but they'll get the next one at least. And I think you just go and you take buildings. 4,000 gold lead now. They bought back on Monkey King. <sighs> what a freaking turnaround. What a freaking turnaround. Well, 4,000 gold lead at 44 minutes. And melee racks are going, going down. Dyer's middle barracks has fallen. Dyer's middle barracks has fallen. As tier three tower assaulted, another building going down. I, I don't think that there's much they can do at this point. It's so hard to actually, like, fight into this lineup now. Because the thing is, is, like, DK does enough damage right now that he is a threat in and of himself. Normally, the thing that's really nice about this is you can 
have a DK that goes in and he doesn't really like do much, right? You don't have to worry about him all that much. He, he just kind of sits there and maybe beats down on buildings a little bit. But now, like in dragon form, he's sitting for 300 a punch. That's in a splash. That's like slow everything else. It's really, really nice. But because you have to deal with the DK and now he has an Aghanim Scepter, you really have to deal with him. That means that Enigma can just stay far back. Invoker can stay far back, throw Alacrity onto him. And then afterwards, you've got like BKB Cataclysm and it's just, it's just over. It's just over. Huh? Taunted. Pull back in, try and take down that Void Spirit. Heck, jump in, pig black hole. I can't on a three. The cataclysm afterwards, and they have enough damage though. They can't get it. Okay, this could work for them if they can somehow manage to win this fight. But never mind. Round two is there. That's the secondary black hole. They take down Yayo, trying to kill off this necro. He goes down as well. Gem tried to pick up, but this one could potentially be GG. We will see. Cheshire Cat still chases Ducalis. It's gonna die. So the Chen goes down, but the punches BKB out. One more punch takes down the Grimstroke, who is now dead. Trying to kill the Pugna, who's hiding out in the trees. Dust out as well. Runs into him the other side. They throw down the Midnight Pulse. They get that kill as well. God damn. Unbelievable. So, up on the high ground now. It is going to be an attempt to hold with Necro Grimstroke. Not easy. They'll have Soulbind, Reaper, Scythe, and well, it's 60. This, 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 this is tough. This is tough. Stroke of Fate. Dual Scepter lift up. Good Lotus Orb, but is it going to be good enough? Silence. Taunted. Pulled back in. Trying to get anything at all out, but it is not going to work. The Shiva's Guard is not nearly enough. And it is going to be another tier three tower down. Mega Creeps, GG call, as Khan are going to take it. Push this to a game at number three. I'm stoked. I did not think that it was going to go like this. Yamich is so happy. He's like, G. He's super happy. The comeback there is, is really impressive. Um, very, very impressive. Like, it's not often that you get into a situation where you can come back when you're like a tier two team struggling. But look at that, that, that tranche of sadness and then the big escalation up the hill of hope and dreams and Khan possibly winning a series against Cyber Legacy. We'll have to see. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be back in just a little bit uh, with our third game. Let's do it.